Welcome to week three. This week we are making our pumpkin patch, all of our adorable pumpkins that will be um, scattered throughout our quilt. Um, I want you to be prepared. This week is a lot of cutting, a lot of organizing, because we are making 19 unique pumpkin blocks. But don't panic. Once you have it organized and labeled, it's really simple and they all kind of go together the same way. And so it's very, you know, the, the prep work makes it easy, I guess is what I should say. So let's go ahead and dive into that. Remember we have our bag. So this is labeled week three pumpkins. I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. And to begin with, we're gonna focus on our 10 inch squares. So I have these stacked up here, just how they came out of the pack. So they're still in order. And if you look at the fabric key, you it's pretty easy to figure out which fabrics are the ones we're going to be using in the pumpkins. We've got fabrics E through J. And so that's what I have in this stack here. And then when you open up the pattern, you'll see it's labeled week three and it tells you how to begin. I do wanna point out just a couple of things for you to be aware of as you begin. When you start, it says from fabric E, that's this cute little uh, kitties that are on this orange background that I have here. You're gonna have three of those fabric E pieces and so when you see the diagrams at the side, every diagram correlates to one 10 inch square. And so the fabric will actually change as you're moving on to a different square. So hopefully that makes sense. And you're just gonna work your way through the stack and match it here. The other thing I wanna point out is when you make these cuts, it tells you what number of pumpkin that it goes to. So let's just start with our fabric E and I'll walk you through it and I think it'll give you a good idea what I'm talking about. So here is our first fabric E and we are going to look at our diagram and I need a six by eight and a half inch cut. So I'm gonna measure over six inches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I am just going to trim this off like so. So this is gonna be extra. There's quite a bit of extra fabric in this. And it's, the thought is that if you have an error, you can pull a piece from somewhere else to help cover it. It might not match exactly, but there's plenty of extra fabric. And so now that was eight and a half over. So here is my eight and a half line. And I have my six by eight and a half inch rectangle. And this makes pumpkin one. So I have a little piece of paper here that I've labeled with a one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pin that to that piece. And now I'm gonna move to my next piece from this same fabric. And I'm gonna start by cutting, it looks like, a four and a half by eight and a half inch piece. So my first cut will be four and a half inches. Make sure I've got this nice and straight. So four and a half inches. We'll turn this and measure over eight and a half. There we go. And this piece is gonna be for pumpkin seven. So I have another piece of paper here labeled with seven. I'm gonna pin that to that piece. Then from that same square, I'm gonna cut a four and a half inch square. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a four and a half inch strip off of this. Whoops, almost cut it too small, double check that. That was almost three and a half instead of four and a half. So I've measured over one, two, three, four and a half. We'll make a cut and then turn this so that it will be square just like so. And this piece is pumpkin 10, according to the pattern. So same idea, I'm going to just label that and put a pin in it. And then you're gonna continue making these cuts all the way through your stack of 10 inch squares and labeling them. You will have 19 different pumpkins. So just follow through and do that. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn because there is a large section 
of cutting your background fabric. And it's the exact same idea, but from this point, since you've cut all your pumpkins, it'll tell you subcut this size and set it with pumpkin one, two, three. It'll give you the number of where those pieces go. So I've gone ahead and done all of that for our pumpkins here. And you can see for pumpkin one, I have this stack of background pieces that go with it. And so every single pumpkin begins in the same way, and that is by snowballing the four corners. We've got these four one and a half inch squares, and we're just gonna place one on each corner, regardless of the size of our pumpkin, and we are just gonna sew from point to point. You can draw a line here if you want, but as usual, I'm gonna use my diagonal seam tape and just start with my needle at this first point and have this second point back on the red line. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add all four of these because I have plenty of room to do that. So we'll just add one after the other. And our last one. Just like so. All right, now we can trim off our seam allowance here. Whoops. My paper and pin came out at some point. I'm gonna put that back on here because I do not wanna forget what number this is. And now we can trim off our seam allowance. I'm just leaving a quarter inch seam on all four of these corners. There we go. Now we can go ahead and press them back. There we go. So by doing it this way, our pumpkin should stay the same size that it began because we're just replacing those corners with our background fabric. So now we can add our sashing. And so this pumpkin is actually, it stands tall like this. And so you'll notice once you've sorted all of these, you're going to have one small piece that matches up to the bottom, two long side pieces, and then one piece that goes on top. And every single pumpkin is exactly the same way. So we're gonna begin by adding this bottom piece to our pumpkin. And this one happens to measure an inch and a half by the width of this block, which is six inches. So an inch and a half by six inches is what I'm sewing on here. We'll press that back. And now we can add these long pieces on either side. this other one to the opposite side. I like to take a few stitches and then make sure I'm lined up all the way down. There we go, now I can press both of those back. go and we can finish off this one by adding our wider piece to the top. This particular one 
is three and a half inches uh, by the width of the block. Let me just make sure I'm nice and lined up here. Looks good. And we'll sew down. There we go. And pumpkin number one is done. Well, you might be saying, but what about the stem? Well, the stems for all of the pumpkins are from our pre-cut, pre-fused shapes. They look like this. And so we can just go ahead now that we have all of our sashing around this block and peel the backing off. We can decide, is the stem you know, right in the middle? Is it poking up from a ways down here? You can really play with it and choose where you want the stem to go. Sometimes I like to make them a little bit crooked just to give it some character. So I think that looks great right there. And now we're just going to press that down. There we go. And just like in week two, whatever method you chose to finish off the edge of the applique, you would then do that here. Um, and then your pumpkin really is done. And you're just going to continue all the way through until you have a whole stack of pumpkins that looks like this. Pretty soon you'll have 19 adorable and unique pumpkin blocks that we're going to set together to make our quilt when we come back in week six. So you'll just set these aside for now. I hope you enjoy stitching these in week three and I'll see you back here in week four. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.